Hi, this is Jason Rohr, and this is the second tutorial video for the controller interface of Sleep is Death. This video shows the basics of using the room editor. So starting where we left off last time, we have this uh, nice uh, uh, farm pond scene that we created. It's added to our scene picker. We've got our, our props in place, our non-player characters in place, and our player character in place. Let's say, though, that we want to actually edit the background scene. We want to edit the room. Um, as I showed you before, by opening up the room editor, we can use the room picker down here to search for other scene, other background scenes that we might want to use. Here's a couple of other outdoor scenes. Let's say we like this pond scene, but we want to modify it. Let's say we want to add a river. Every room is made up of a grid of tiles. And up here is the tile picker. By clicking on some of these tiles, we can select a tile and then add it into the scene with some of these tools down here. We have a single um, draw a tool that draws single tiles into the scene. We have a tool that can fill vertical lines. We have a tool that can uh, fill horizontal lines as well, and we have a bucket fill tool. Um, of course, we don't want to be uh, adding these sink tiles into our, our pond scene. That doesn't look right, and it's you know, not appropriate, so let's uh, use the undo uh, button here to clear those out. We want to add some uh, tiles that look like the existing pond tiles. Now, we have this whole database of tiles up here, and we can kind of flip through it. We don't know what these tiles are called, um, and it's going to be hard to find them in here. So let's use the tile picker tool here. Um, to click on a tile, all the tiles um, that are in an existing scene can be picked as the selected tile. If we mouse over up here, uh, we can see what these are called. So this, this one is called Farm Ponds. Let's try doing a search for that. Okay, so by doing a search for that, it shows all the tiles that were named with the, with the words Farm and Pond. And um, we can click on any of these then and use the single tile tool to add them to the scene. So let's start painting something that looks like a river. So, okay, we've got a very basic river here. It doesn't have the nice stippled edge uh, that the rest of the pond had. So let's uh, pick some of the corner tiles for a nice river delta. Um, and then let's look for those edge tiles to paint the right edge here. And then the left edge over here to add stippling down the left edge. Okay, so now we have a river with a stippled edge. But notice that the stippling doesn't mesh well with the stippling and the other colors of the other parts of the background here. That's because the person who created this, uh, this pond never anticipated that the pond would be anywhere other than in the middle of the path. There are no edge tiles for the pond that match up with green or brown or green and brown stippled areas. So that means that we're going to need to create tiles uh, from scratch in order to um, make this river look, proper, look right as it, as it flows through this other part of the background scenery. So how do we do that? Let's pick um, one of these edge tiles here. Now we can open up the tile editor and get right into that. But before we do that, I'm going to show you another use of this tile picker here. This tile picker has a search mode, which we're currently using to search for farm, farm pond tiles. But we use this little flip button here. It flips it into stack mode, which shows us a list of the most recently used tiles with the most recent uh, ones at the top of the list. So if we scroll back through our stack, we see it goes all the way back to some of those sync tiles that we picked at first. But let's use um, the tile picker to add some more tiles to the top of our stack. So these, these are the three tiles that we're going to need to edit. They're right at the top of our stack now, ready to go. So now when we jump into the tile editor by clicking this little button above the picker, uh, we have these tiles right on the stack that we're going to need to edit. So let's pick the first one here. And now we want to add a, uh, that dark blue color down the edge here with some stippling to it. So we might want to try doing that by opening up the, the uh, color editor, trying to pick a dark blue color and getting it just to look just right. Uh, but that's going to be really hard to do um, just by eye. So what we can do instead is open up, we ha since we have all these tiles on the stack, uh, we can open up one of the existing tiles for the pond and use the color picking tool down here to pick that color. It gets added, to the, added as our selected color. Then um, go ahead from the stack and pick the tile we're going to edit and uh, then use uh, the uh, single pixel tool here to draw that blue color in now that we've picked it and we're back into the tile that we want to edit. And stipple it here as quickly as we can just to give uh, a feeling of what it would look like. I'd spend much more time uh, doing this and, and being more careful about it if, um, if I wasn't doing it live. Okay, now we can call this forest pond and add it to our database. So there it is at the top of our stack and we see it matches up with that one we were just editing. Let's do the uh, green stippled one as well using the same kind of technique here. Um, painting in the edge of the edge of the river and stippling it a little bit. Uh, okay, let's say we made a mistake. Let's pick that green color and not make this so wide down here. Um, go back to our blue color again. Okay, uh, that looks good. Forest pond, add it. And we've got one more to do, which is the solid green one. 
And because it's solid, we can easily use the line fill, vertical line fill tool here to add those first two lines and then stipple the rest to make it a little bit quicker. Okay, forest pond. And add it. Okay, so now we've got these all at the top of our stack. Uh, we can also switch back to search mode and look for forest pond and see those three tiles that we've created right there. Okay, so let's close the tile editor. We're done in here. And let's um, switch back to the single tile tool, add that tile in, switch to the next stippled one, add that one in, and switch to that one. Okay, so now we've got a stippled edge going into a nice gradation with our other uh, gradated uh, background tiles here. Now, of course, we still haven't done this other side, and it feels like, oh, well, we're going to need to go in and do that same editing process for those tiles again to do the right edge of the pond. In fact, we don't need to. Click on one of them, open up the tile editor, simply use the flip tool. And I was before I was, I was clicking the Add button manually to add every tile to the database. But in fact, you don't need to do that. If you've made any changes to any tiles um, or anything in any editor, and you just close the editor, that last change that you made gets saved. Um, into the editor. So now we have that tile here. We can add it in. Um, let's go ahead and flip these other two. Um, in this case, I'm not going to exit the tile editor each time. So I'll save that tile manually by hitting the add button. And we've got to do the solid green one as well. Flip it. And we'll just close the editor this time. It will automatically be saved. Okay. So there's our final um, three tiles to make the river complete. So now that we have this farm pond done, let's um, Let's add it as another uh, farm pond scene. It's already called farm pond. And now if we search for the pond ones, we have two ponds, the one with the river and the, the one with the river here and the one without. So let's pick the one with the river, close our um, room editor here. And now we're back at our, our scene and we have the river flowing through. Let's test it and see what it looks like from the player's point of view. So here we are in the player side, you know, once we've entered practice mode and the player can move around uh, and can't stand in our pond, can move and notice that the player can stand in the middle of the river, which isn't so great. They can't walk into the pond, they can't walk off the edge of the path, and they can stand in the middle of the river. So that's not great. Let's, we made a mistake. Let's close the practice uh, mode here, open the room editor again, and what we forgot to do is we forgot to add walls. Let's open the walls mode right here. This shows areas that cannot, where the player cannot stand. If we click back to that first farm pond, you see that the walls look good. They're in the middle of the pond, you can't stand in the pond, you can't stand off the edge of the path. But in our scene, we forgot to add walls going down the center of the river. So let's do that by adding three more walls here. Let's add it to the database again. Notice now that there's a duplicate of our farm pond because we've got two different versions of it in the database. By clicking back and forth between them, we can see the one that we don't want anymore. And this is something we haven't done before. We can actually delete this resource from the database using the uh, delete button. So that takes two clicks, once to say you want to delete something, and a second time to confirm. And now that resource is gone from the database, but the one that we want is still there. Um, so let's pick the one that we want, close it, open up the practice mode again down here, and send the move across so that the player can, we can practice from the player's point of view. And notice that the player can walk on either side of the river now, but can't stand in the, and can jump across the river essentially, but can't stand in the middle of the river, which is exactly uh, what we want. So that, that room is done. Let's close the practice mode here. And now we can save a new version of our scene with a new room. Uh, we still call it Farm Pond. We, let's, let's call it Farm Pond 2, just so that we can remember what it is. Add it to our scene. Um, so now we have the version with the river and the version without. So those are the basics of how to modify an existing room in the controller interface of Sleep is Death. And the next video will show how to actually create a room from scratch. Um, thank you.